Hi, welcome to my YouTube. China was never happy with either the AK-47 and the SKS. So in the early 60s, they set out to combine the two and they came up with the Type 63 rifle. A completely new design with an exterior resemblance of the SKS. But for some reason, it didn't go so well. Even though they made millions and exported them, the AK and the SKS remain as the frontline weapons until the border war with Vietnam. The war taught them it was time for a change. They needed a new ammo and a new rifle for it, but the development timeline would be too long, so they opted for something in the interim in 7.62. The aim is to build a better AK. The Type 81 was that rifle. They accomplished it with a longer barrel. The original was 17 inch for better accuracy. Three position adjustable gas regulator. A selector on the left side that could be operated with a thumb. Short stroke gas system and a longer receiver, both for less recoil. Obviously, I can't compare the accuracy because I live in Canada where the AK are prohibited. But the rest, I think, they did well, except for one thing, the grenade launcher. I prefer the grenade launcher be detachable, like on the FN. Put it on when you need to use it, instead of carrying all this extra weight, all the time for a small window of opportunity. Also, because of the grenade launcher, the sight radius is shorter than the AK. So today, I'm going to show you another way to remove the grenade launcher. There are a couple of ways on YouTube. I'm doing it not to, to move the front sight forward. That may come in a later date. But for now, I want to put a thread for the muzzle brake. I think my way is easier, but it requires you to buy a bearing pulley, bearing puller. It costs about $30. So, let's begin. To make your grenade launcher detachable, you need to remove this cross pin. And for that, you'll need a, a vise, a punch, and a three pound hammer. Now, where to insert the punch will depends on which hole you can insert it to, and that's the deepest. In this particular case, this hole was the deepest, and that's where I put the punch, so I drifted from the left to the right. This particular gun, I had no problem removing this pin. But I also have another uh, rifle, and that was a bugger to remove the pin. I ended up uh, drilling the pin out. In any case, um, once you got to this stage where you remove the pin, to remove this grenade launcher itself, I use this puller. But before I could use it, I because of this screw goes in to the muzzle, I need to protect the muzzle. So I'm using a big screw with a copper washer on it and I put some um, electric electrical tape around the thread. I actually filed the uh, thread first and now I'm going to insert it into the muzzle to protect the crown. Then I'm going to put this on like this. And make sure that this screw sits on the screw head and I'm tightening it and now I have to tighten these screws and it comes with a wrench with it as I get closer like that.
just tight a little snug, not overly tight. Okay, and now once this is all the way down, I put this in and I start turning. I want to show you that that start moving. Oh, I just heard it uh, starting to move. You can hear the creak and the crack, and it's starting to separate. You see, it's moving right here. It's kind of awkward. Let me uh, move it around so I could uh, turn it better. I've not done this before, so that's why it's creaking a lot. The gap is now about past a quarter inch. It's off! I have freed my rifle of this unnecessary burden it was shackled to. It weighs in a hefty 150 grams. Oops, wrong play. Okay, um, let's get back to the puller. Once you run out of thread, you are required to put additional rods in the grenade launcher. I use one of these extensions to push it, push the barrel down further and further. I use a longer one at the end. It works great. Now, another thing I want to point out is, um, which is quite important to protect the crown. I made this uh, kind of large screw, and I want to show you what it looks like when it's inside the uh, grenade launcher. You can see it earlier, but you you can see it actually protects the crown and that opening that slot it's there's a dimple at the end of this thread and it sits in there so it stops it from uh, wobbling so that's an important feature okay now the next thing I want to show you is um, this grenade launcher it's not a straight tube um, the first about I would say about half an inch it's the uh, diameter is slightly smaller than this part okay so this is what it would look like alongside the barrel like that so as you can see it's about oh, about half inch to five eighths of an inch longer so that would be the smaller diameter in the front okay another thing I want to point out is this barrel is not entirely same diameter it's a little bigger on the on the back here and in the front I would say about an inch and a quarter also about an inch and a quarter here and there's a smaller diameter uh, about three inches in the middle section here. Now that is a cause of concern because when I removed the grenade launcher there was a little bit of moisture in here. Now I haven't cleaned this gun with hot water in quite a while, in months and months and I'm surprised water was trapped in here. So that is a concern. So if you're cleaning with hot water after using a corrosive ammo, I would suggest using a hair dryer and dry the grenade launcher because I, I'm pretty sure 
there is some water trapped inside this opening or this um, this gap should I say okay now once now once the grenade launcher is off I planned to have a a flash hider so I have to I plan to thread it and put a flash hider like this now um, I'm going to try to uh, thread this barrel myself now what thread am I gonna use I'm gonna use basically I have a lot of these VZ 58 uh, this is a flash hider I got a break so I wanna reuse these and so therefore the VZ 58 uses a 14 by 1 right hand so I have to order those uh, tap and die no not a tap just a die and um, I'm gonna try to do that myself now you don't have to do it yourself there are companies that will do it um, that will put a thread in for you at a very reasonable price uh, I believe it's seventy dollars only so if you're afraid of doing it by all means take it to a gunsmith there's a lot of competent gunsmith that will do it for a very reasonable price I'm not ready to uh, reattach the uh, grenade launcher sleeve so I might as well tell you what I'm gonna do before I do that um, there seem to be some uh, gunk inside so I'm gonna soak it overnight in solvent and then I'm gonna use a, a wire brush uh, attached to a drill and I'm gonna basically uh, drill it out and maybe even um, a um, you know, wrap some um, sandpaper around the brush and just smoothen the bore a little bit before uh, hammering it in with a 2x4 use something soft or, or even a, a mallet um, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna reattach it with these screws well, it's gonna be a longer one than this but it's gonna be like this I'm going to reattach it with screws and so it'll be easy for me to uh, unscrew it and detach and of course the puller makes it a really easy for me to detach this from the barrel without having a heavy vise a three pound hammer and a punch so that's why the puller is really really handy okay so while I'm waiting for the tools to come in um, to tap the uh, muzzle I might as well post this um, this video on how to remove the um, grenade launcher sleeve so uh, oh one more thing I forgot um, uh, after removing the sleeve I measured the barrel and it uh, measured 18 and 3 quarter of an inch so it is legal you don't have to worry about that so thank you for uh, joining me and please subscribe.